Hey guys, welcome to TV Commentary. I am your host, Redmaster, and of course, this is the show where I will give you play-by-plays of certain TV matches, and explain some of the reasoning behind them, maybe give my opinions, my thoughts, analysis, on how the matches ended the way they did. So, without further ado, let's go straight into, you see this one, the middle one right here, we're taking a look at Uri Zero versus App Fellritter. I don't have an Apple Fritter. <laughs> Okay, so Apple's gonna come out first turn using the Dragon's Lore. He'll draw a Spirit Crash and Shadow of the Red Cloaks. Now, looking by this deck, he might be going for a Spirit Crash Health deck. Now, I experimented with this before, um, and it can be effective if played correctly. So, Uri will have to pass his first turn, but end up coming out with a Masuda the next. Uh, now, into Apple Ritter's third turn, he has to pass again, which he did the second turn. That allows Uri to bring out a Ronin. Uh, strange positioning though, uh, he's not going right down the middle, could be reasoning behind that, but not sure yet, we'll have to see. Koro comes out in the middle of Apple Ritter's castle, uh, Uri's Ronin gets the buff, Titan Watcher comes out right down the middle, and the swiftness to Ronin, so that'll give him 7 direct damage to the castle, which brings him down to 13. Masuda comes in, looking for an attack, Koro will uh, weaken the Ronin. And Zealous Knight comes out looking to kill that Ronin. Of course, the Holy Aura will finish him off. <coughs> Going to Uri's fifth turn now. He'll use the Masuda to damage the castle a little bit, so it's down to 11. And another Kuru comes out. He's coining into an Ice Drake as well. Interesting play there. Not sure if the Ice Drake is intentional in that deck. But uh, you never know. Blessing of the Trent now to Zealous Knight. It's going to make it dangerous and be able to survive the Titan attack. So that'll ultimately kill off Titan Watcher. And Kunoichi to follow after Koru kills the Masuda. Uri now coming in. He's probably going to use his resources to kill off that Zealous Knight, which he does. And a face of the dragon goes to um, Uri's Kuru. And he'll use it to jet back behind the castle. Another Zealous from Apple Fritter, uh, now Shroud of the Red Cloaks to it, he draws off a Vanishing Strike from it. Meanwhile, all of the Stealth Forces, as you can see, are coming in closer, but already doesn't know where they are. Frozen Storm, though, good counter, that's gonna buy him some time. Uh, Stealth needs to be pushed back along with the Zealous. Another Shroud from the draw, in comes Centaur now, so we know it's sort of gonna be a Health Spirit Crash deck. Flux comes out as well, and everything is sort of positioned in a Guarding fashion, worried about where that Kuru is going to strike. Another face of the dragon to Uri's Kuru, he's going to zip it now down towards the bottom, that's leaving his castle open to attack. Shroud the Red Cloaks comes out on Zealous, so does Mystic Weapons, but that's Mystic Weapons will go to the Centaur, and he'll poke at the base. In comes Mystic Panda now as well, so he, Apple's got a lot of forces here, he's going to Keep some guarding the base, meanwhile, pressing up the offensive, that's really smart. In comes Shodan now, sorry about that. Pacifism draw, Centaur's gonna poke the base again. Vanishing Strike to Zealous Knight. Vanishing Strike, and Spirit Crash, okay, so the Spirit Crash kinda finished him off right there. You see how effective that was in killing off their maiden castle damage, and that's why those types of decks can be a little dangerous to play against. Now, here's what I wrote down about this mask that I found interesting. Um, I give Uri early points for the Ronin. That was definitely a good play. The Masuta into the uh, Ronin, and then the Swifters to follow up. That's a good way to get some early damage. I also give him points for Koru and the double face. That could have led to something more on the castle, but he kind of kept it back a lot, fearing that he was going to be discovered and it would die. I get that. And of course, all those guards around the castle made it hard for Uri's Koru to get in. Um, Apple, Apple Fritter using uh, a lot of health buffs on Zealous Knights. It's very effective. Zealous is a tough unit to kill um, without any buffs, without any cards uh, thrown onto it. So I think giving it more and protecting it was a smart move. And of course, a Spirit Crash, uh, using cards like Pacifism and Vanishing Strike, 
that's an eight extra that's eight extra health leading to um however much damage I think I think the end damage was 14 to the castle if I'm correct so we saw that played out in the end so we're gonna take a look now in cards TV let's see where we can find another match uh, we're gonna go right here seg faulty versus whiplasher okay so the game opens up whiplasher is gonna use a secret technique right from the start, that'll draw him an onslaught. That onslaught could be used first and draw later on. Seg faulty. Uh, Seg passes his first turn. I'm just gonna call him Seg. Uh, in comes Masuda from Whiplasher's hand, uh, looking to probably attack the castle right out of the bat, and of course uh, lead to a decreased cost in flux. Uh, Titan Watcher comes out from Seg's end, doing a castle block there, so the Masuda can't get any damage. Flux comes out right down the middle, except not in Titan Watcher attack rate. It's very smart. Seg does. Uh, Seg doesn't play anything except moving up that Titan Watch. I'm not sure how smart that'll be. Another onslaught from another secret technique, and that will looking to I think kill a Titan Watcher there. Yes, uh, two card draws from onslaught. Another secret technique is played. There is Fist of the Five Gods, and the Masuda ends the Titan Watcher. Meanwhile, Flux is coming right down the base. Seg plays House of the Ninja Rats and ends his turn, which will lead Flux to will leave Flux and open uh, castles to attack, call to war and treasure hunt, that treasure hunt will go right onto Flux, giving it some extra health, and of course the invest of two gold, I think, two gold, and also Kunoichi looking to strike down that house of ninja rats, Seg passes his fifth turn, now that's kind of the point where we could see his downfall, leaving him open at turn five is really something you don't want to do. But here comes Vanishing Strike now from Flux, that'll do 7 damage to the castle, and of course get him 2 more cards. Kuno takes out the house, uh, blocking any potential Rat King swarms. Uh, in comes Flux again though, also deflecting shield went on to Kunoichi, missed that. But in comes Shaman now from Seg, he's going to play a Vanishing Strike on it, uh, hoping to get more draw, and of course that Kunoichi off of his base. Income Shaman now for the body block to the castle. Yep, right there, as you saw. And what is uh, Whip gonna do here? He's gonna attack Flux again, so Mystic Journey Disintegrate. Play Call to War, he pulls the books from it. Another Call to War pulls out the Salahar Soldier and play a copy of Flying Books from his hand as well. Uh, so he's gonna get two draw next turn if Seg can't do anything. But he has an Ice Blast, so that'll count for the two books. And of course, slow down the Salahar Soldier, however, the Flux is still in attacking range. He's gonna attack that castle, draw a Vanish and a Shadow Katana, uses Vanish and bounces Cor uh, Flux back to his hand. Flux will uh, again come right down the middle. Ninja Training, we'll see what he draws from that. He'll draw a Ogre Thief. The Shadow Katana goes on Flux, giving her 5 attack, and of course, it goes back to Seg. With 8 gold, he's going to play another Ice Blast, so that'll kill off the Salahar Soldier. Very nice. And Kunoichi down the middle. Now, however, we know from Whip's hand that he has a Fenrir. A Fenrir is going to expose the Kunoichi and knock on the castle. Flux will move up. It's now Seg's turn at 4 health. And it looks like he's forced to surrender, so... Very good uh, control by Whiplash in this game. Again, I have a couple things to say. I got him down right here. Um, Seg Faulty versus Whiplasher. Whip was in full control of the match, I think, from the beginning. We saw Seg couldn't really do much in terms of his hand um, later on, like turn 5. That really hurt him. Uh, I'm suspecting he might have had hand problems, not being able to play a lot of his hand. Uh, probably got some higher costing cards early on, which could lead to potential defeat, um, depending on how much your opponent throws. Uh, the bouncing of Flux continually, um, you know, the Vanishing Strike, the Vanish from Whip, I know those spells might have, I don't know if those spells were all from Flux, but the the use of them to bounce back Flux, you know, so she wouldn't die, was very smart, and we saw how that got a lot of spells into Whip's hand. And of course, uh, the Fenrir on Kuno, um, you know, the ending of that match, um, I think maybe if uh, Seg through the Kunoichi to body block. He had, he may have bought himself some more time. Maybe killed the Flux. But then again, it was already towards the end of that match, and I think he knew 
he was pretty much done. So overall, two good matches for uh, another episode of TV Commentary. I think uh, that'll call it here for the episode. If you guys do enjoy this, please make, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave in the comments down below what you thought of these two matches. And until next time, guys, stay gaming.